Today we have a lot to unpack regarding Florida because there's a lot of things that have been signed into law recently that are going to affect the housing market here in a major way. Also, I want to give a good basically movers remorse story of somebody that moved to Florida several years ago and is now leaving Florida because of a lot of the things that we talk about here on the channel. So we'll start with that and then I'll get into all the changes that are going to be affecting real estate. So there was this woman, she moved to Tampa, Florida back in 2018 and she came from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She was 23 years old. She quit her job in journalism up there and decided, okay, uh, Tampa seems like a good place for millennials to move to. I'm gonna move to Tampa. I always loved coming to Florida as a kid. It's kind of like the typical story, right? Like people come here on vacation, especially when they're younger, go to Disney, go to the beaches and stuff. And they're like, yeah, let's move to Florida. A lot of people have that similar story, but then the reality shifts once they're actually here. So this woman, she lived in Tampa for only three months and then she ended up loving it so much that she decided to buy a house just three months into her uh, journey of living here in Florida. And that was back when homes in Tampa were actually affordable. We're talking 2018 here, so pre-pandemic prices, everybody. Now she said that she really liked living in Tampa kind of all the way up until the pandemic hit because once people started pouring into the area, because Tampa and Miami were the two major growth areas for the pandemic, we received, you know, hundreds of thousands of people during this time. And, you know, it just made the place go from a nice, pleasant place to live to basically unbearable due to the overcrowding. You know, it already gets crowded in the wintertime due to the snowbirds coming down. But during the pandemic, it was like quadruple, and I can attest to that. And so the other problem was she wanted to get a job in journalism, which was her career path. But because of all the overcrowding here, she wasn't able to find a decent job in journalism throughout her stay here in Florida. But then she got lucky and she found a remote job for a Canadian news agency that she could work remote for and still live here in Florida. So hit the, hit the jackpot on that one. But she says after the pandemic came, you know, the problem was even though she had a good job and she got into the housing market when it was still affordable, because of the real estate valuation skyrocketing, her property taxes started shooting up. It went from $700 a year to $2,000 a year. Homeowner's insurance, no big surprise, also skyrocketed as well. She also came to find out way later down the road, once her insurance started skyrocketing, that her house was built on a sinkhole and that her insurance is significantly higher because of that. Like, well, yeah, no kidding. That's something that really sucks to find out only after the fact. So now she said, you know what? I've had it with Tampa. I've had it with Florida. I'm leaving. I'm going back to Pittsburgh. She says she'll miss the beaches and the weather down here, but is ready to escape the high cost of living, essentially. Now, keep in mind, it's only 2024. So she's been here barely six years. And within that six year time frame, she has seen her cost of living shoot up enough to make her say, you know what, I'm out of here. And it's interesting because you hear stories like this, right? Where people moved here when it was affordable and are now leaving because it's unaffordable. You hear this a lot also from locals, people that grew up here and can no longer afford to stay here and they leave. And at the same time, Florida, is introducing new stimulus programs that are gonna further fuel the housing market here. So people get upset with the Biden administration for doing this, but like I said the other day, guys, Florida is just as guilty for doing this. We have something here called the Hometown Heroes Program, and so far, they've sank $100 million into this, basically, since 2021, and it's helped more than 14,000 people so far buy their first home and more additional funding is expected to hit starting around july 1st of this year so every year the housing market here in florida is seeing additional programs that come into the works to help more people that otherwise wouldn't be able to afford a home go out there and buy a home and what does that do to home prices it makes them go up you have more people chasing less inventory. Now, some people look at this as a good thing. Some people look at it as a bad thing. I personally, I'm on the side of it being a bad thing because just like everything else, guys, nothing is ever allowed to crash anymore, right? Like instead of let's, let's just let it all work itself out, nope. Let's give people more money to go out there and buy houses because they're too expensive, which in turn drives up the price even more. 
and then they have to keep fueling these stimulus programs with more and more money to keep people in the market because otherwise they won't be able to afford it. It's really that simple. However, as somebody who lives here and is seeing the inventory explode in different parts of Florida, I'm not really sure if programs like this are really going to be enough to keep the overall Florida housing market afloat guys because we're already seeing many areas where prices are starting to go negative year over year most notably in southwest florida right now and the thing is i think due to this extreme bump in the cost of ownership for homes here i think you're going to continue to see houses hit the market faster than people can come in and buy them just due to the fact that there's so many people that can't afford houses at these prices and even with these stimulus programs, people aren't going to be able to come in and buy them. That's, that's my thought on how this is going to work out. So it's like, yeah, it's going to kind of bolster the market a little bit. But I think in the end, just the sheer amount of inventory will beat that out. Check this out. And a shell of a house right here. Nothing left but the front facade. By the way, I'm walking now around somewhere. Westchester is kind of the name of the neighborhood here in Miami. I don't know this area at all. I had to come down here and run an errand. So I figured I'd just shoot a video in another neighborhood. I have no clue about anything here. <laughs> I never come here, but I'm here today. But that's not all. Just giving people money to buy homes, it doesn't end there, guys. In fact, there was $408 million passed recently in the Florida legislature for different types of housing stimulus programs. You have um, the state and local government housing trust funds. That includes the $174 million for the State Housing Initiatives Partnership, which includes down payment and closing cost assistance programs. So that's like whenever you go to buy a home, if you're a first time home buyer, that's a program that'll help you get into the property with you know a down payment assistance. I've looked into that before. And basically, they'll give you a pretty sizable down payment. I think they'll even give you up to like thirty or forty thousand dollars for this. But it comes with a catch. In that situation, you have to hang on to that house for fifteen years. You can't rent it or sell it within that fifteen years. And if you do, then the money's no longer uh, a forgivable loan. It becomes a repayable loan. So now you need to repay that money if you decide to rent out the house or sell it within 15 years. So you really have to be in it for the long term to, you know, really get one of these loans and not have to pay it back. And that's the thing, like most people, they don't stay in their house for 15 years, guys, especially first time home buyers. Most people that are buying a house for their first time, they're not going to stay in that house for 15 years and are very likely to have to pay this money back at some point down the road. They're also allocating $234 million for state apartment incentive loan programs, which help build affordable rental housing. They're giving people $200 million to make upgrades to their homes against storms, which ultimately are supposed to reduce insurance premiums, but I think that's also just a big joke. I mean, that's just another way to stimulate the economy, if you ask me, because people make these upgrades. You can say it's safer, this and that, but how much is the insurance really gonna lower your bill? Not by much. Along with this money, they'll also give low-income homeowners up to $10,000 just to have an inspection done on their home to see what needs to be implemented as far as upgrades for all the storm equipment that they might need. So lots of free money getting pumped into the Florida housing market, guys. And when you pump free money into any system like we saw during the pandemic, it just makes the prices go up. But none of this is going to solve the problems that we have in terms of high property tax bills and high insurance bills and i think ultimately that's still going to win over because when you have a bunch of people that need to sell properties because they just can't afford that anymore it doesn't matter what kind of stimulus you give people it might help people get into the house initially but it's not going to help them afford it long term they're also going to be imposing a 1.75 percent tax on most florida insurance premiums which requires insurers to give homestead property owners a deduction on their residential property insurance premiums in the amount of 1.75% of the policyholder's total premium. That's supposed to take effect starting October 1st of 2024. So if you have a homesteaded property and you pay homeowner's insurance, you're supposed to get an additional 1.75% off of the premium, which is not a lot of money, but still it's more free money for everybody. But it's not all bad though. There actually are some 
good things with some of these uh, laws that they passed. They also passed the increased transparency of HOA docs and condominium documents, which requires an association managing a condo with 25 or more units to post digital copies of official condominium documents on its website. So that includes the condo bylaws and rules, articles of incorporation, uh, annual financial statements, the budget, all kinds of things like that. And also they're, they're implementing the same thing for HOA communities. So if this was an HOA community here with houses, they have to do the same thing now if there's 100 or more uh, parcels in that HOA community, which I think is a good thing because when you're going to buy any type of property, whether it's in an HOA or a condo, one of the biggest hiccups is always, oh, we got to get you over the condo document. And some of them are ancient, guys. Like you literally have printouts from the 1950s sometimes, you know, in the old typewriter font and stuff like that. And you have to read through all that stuff. And then if it gets lost or stolen or something happens to it, you as the buyer are responsible for reimbursing the seller to get a replacement cost. And so this kind of eliminates a lot of those troubles. And also, if you're a buyer and you wanna do your due diligence on a property, you can just go out there and look this up on the community's website before ever even making an offer to see how sound the building is. They're gonna have their meeting minutes in there, the articles of incorporation, the bylaws. So you can get a full picture of what's going on in the building before ever even making an offer. And I think that is a forward thinking step finally. Like, you know, instead of wait till the last minute to do all this stuff and you're under pressure doing, during your due diligence period of the transaction, this gives people a leg up when it comes to buying any type of HOA property. I'm not gonna get into all the details of this, but they also passed the $1.2 billion budget for the Everglades and water quality that's supposed to go towards, you know, making sure we have clean water here in Florida, which is always a good thing. And another good thing from this is the seller flood disclosure, okay? This is gonna require sellers from now on to disclose in writing certain flood information to a prospective purchaser at or before executing a contract for the sale of residential property. This means no more lying and hiding when it comes to flooding. You can't pretend like you've never had a flood in your house, otherwise you're risking a lawsuit now. And this is gonna be required by law. Before, this was not a requirement here, amazingly, even though we have major problems here with flooding in Florida, but now it's gonna be law. And in starting on October 1st, 2024, if you don't disclose previous flooding in the house, you could be sued for that. Another good thing from these new laws, with HB 621, protecting private property rights, this addresses issues with unauthorized squatters who occupy private property. The bill aims to quickly restore possession of such property to the lawful owner by allowing the property owner or their agent to request the immediate removal of unlawfully occupying persons from a residential dwelling. This is effective July 1st, 2024. This is a huge win for the state of Florida, guys. No more, oh, you know, I'm, I can move into your house and squat here and live here for free. That's done starting July 4th, and I think that is fantastic. They're also allocating $500,000 towards combating unlicensed real estate activity, so it's not a huge budget for that, but they want to crack down on people trying to sell real estate that aren't supposed to, guys. And I have actually known a couple people that have tried to do this, and sometimes successfully. And finally, they're taking a look at the homestead exemption. If this gets approved in November at the ballot box, okay, they're going to make an amendment to the Florida State Constitution requiring that the $25,000 of assessed value, which is exempt from all ad valorem taxes other than school district taxes, be adjusted annually for inflation. That means we could see larger homestead exemptions due to all this inflation that we've been having, which is basically 100% necessary at this point. With you, you guys see the property tax bills I show you here, and they are just astronomical, guys. Is this gonna save people a ton of money? Probably not, but it will start saving people money. But you know, it's funny because it just seems like the only thing that government knows how to do if they want to make something more affordable, they just give people the money for it which is the wrong answer, okay? It never works and it just makes whatever they're trying to make more affordable end up being more expensive. And I don't know if they actually know this and don't care because it makes them look good as politicians or they're not aware of this and they think they're actually helping the problem. Either way, 
doesn't matter because it's not working. We already have some of the largest affordability cha challenges anywhere in the country, guys. Like out of 200 cities in Florida, Fort Lauderdale and Miami are the least affordable areas in all of the state, especially for renters. Fort Lauderdale ranked 129th and Miami ranked 159th according to Rent Cafe. And even though rents are starting to level out now throughout the state, the problem is people's salaries aren't really going up and the cost of living on everything else continues to go up. So more and more people's budgets are just going towards paying the rent and trying to keep a roof over their head and keeping food in their stomach. And they even acknowledge here like, look, the, the pay for a lot of these jobs here in Florida is very low. It's been like that for the longest time. This is a stereotype of the state of Florida that's actually true. It's hard to make a good living here just working one of these low level hospitality jobs, which is what a lot of renters work. Here we have a house that is for sale and is under contract. We don't know for how much, but they were asking 1.1 million. They listed it back at the beginning of the year and they bought it back in 2020 for 820,000. But there's trouble in paradise because guess what? They're not paying their property taxes. According to the tax roll, their 2023 taxes of almost $9,000 a year have gone unpaid. It's likely why they're selling this house. Get out from underneath it before it's too late. And I imagine more and more people are gonna be doing this and heading for the exits as they cannot pay the bills. You know, these houses guys are sucking people dry with the property taxes and insurance. This is a prime example right here. If you sell soon, you can get out of it while the market's still up, right? But if you wait too long, there's the risk that you may end up suffering and not be able to recoup your money and have to go completely in the foreclosure over this. Places in like Tampa and Orlando are particularly cost burden with this. For example, guys, like, you know, the average rent in those areas now is $1,900 a month, whereas the annual average income is only $55,000 a year. So when you break that down, the average person is only making about $4,500, $4,600 a month, and almost half of that is going just towards the rent. But yet, they're gonna pump all this money into the housing market here, and that's very likely to just make the cost of housing, including rentals, go up is what I'm worried about. Unless so many people just continue to list and sell, guys. This is so far um, an isolated issue. Like I said, it's mainly in Southwest Florida, but you're also seeing prices come down substantially in like the Villages, Florida. I think that's down like about 4% year over year already right now. And it's because of inventory. You know, when you see a lot of inventory come on the market, prices start to fall. And that's what we're starting to see happening in these areas. And the question is like, are more people gonna continue selling because they can't afford it? And is that gonna increase the inventory high enough to offset all these stimulus programs that are coming down the pipeline this year? I think it's too soon to answer that question, but I wanna bring this stuff up because it just shows you don't have to live just in Chicago or San Francisco or whatever to see free money programs come down the pipeline and people get money for houses. You know, it's, this can happen anywhere and it's happening throughout an entire state. It's been happening since 2021 when they started this Hometown Heroes program. Guys, this is not really a new thing, but they keep adding to it. They keep pumping more and more money into it, which also kind of reinforces this idea that I've been pondering here for the last several weeks, which is can the housing market and the economy even crash under these conditions when there's being so much money thrown at the situation, how long can they kick the can down the road? I don't have an answer to that, but I think it's probably a lot longer than any of us thought. You know, like a lot of people say, oh, Michael, you were wrong. There's not, not any housing crash there. You know, nothing crazy has happened. Well, listen, guys, anybody who was talking about that, including myself, made that prediction based on normal fundamentals of what should happen in a market if things aren't toyed with. But as we're starting to see, that's not the world we live in. We live in a world where everything is artificially propped up now. And it doesn't seem like that's gonna go away anytime soon. So there is a possibility that we don't see any crash of any kind because so much money keeps getting pumped into the system. That is the alternative. And like I said in my, in my previous video, that might sound good for a little while until inflation starts running through the roof because what they're doing at the same time is completely destroying the value of the dollar, guys. So anybody who thinks this is a good thing, it's not, you're not gonna be thinking that in 10 to 15 years from now 
when a gallon of milk costs 20 bucks. Because unfortunately, that's the end game of where this ends up eventually when you keep throwing money at the system. And I think pretty much everybody in office on both sides of the aisle now has proven that they'll do anything to look good for the voters. And what that usually means is giving away free money of some sort. So in Florida is no different, by the way. But the last thing I'd be wondering if I was a home buyer in Florida today, what are you saying, Michael? Does this mean that prices are gonna continue heading up? Well, maybe and maybe not, because like I said earlier, it still depends on what's happening in your area. If you're starting to see inventory explode on the market, and prices are already down year over year like many different areas in Florida, I think it's safe to say that prices will still continue going down in areas like that moving forward, even with these stimulus programs. Because look, this Hometown Heroes, right? It helped 14,000 people buy a house. That's only 14,000 transactions versus how much inventory is on the market? Let me check, I'll put it up on the screen here for you. We can see here that the inventory in Florida as of January, we're already into March, and the January numbers were 138,000. That's pretty much at pre-pandemic levels here. As you can see, in October of 2019, it was about 140,000 listings available, so we're right there. And even if you go all the way back to 2017, 2016, even at the heights of the markets, you know, summer selling months, 160,000 homes for sale. So we're right there at pre-pandemic levels of inventory here in Florida right now. So that's not that many houses sold over the past three years when you take a zoom out approach, right? That's what other people would say like, well, you know, this isn't that big of a deal because it's not like, you know, it's gonna cause hundreds of thousands of people to buy. Maybe not, but it does cause more people to buy in general, which does help squeeze the prices up a little bit higher. So I still think it's very important for you to study your local area to see which direction has the prices been trending? What's been happening with inventory? Is it going up or is it going down? Have rent prices flattened out? Are they still going up? Are they going down? If you don't know this stuff, you're not in a good position to buy. And that's why you can never give a blanket statement like, oh yeah, you should go buy now, or no, you definitely shouldn't, because everybody's situation will be different, guys. So I do think that if you find the right area where prices are still kind of on the upswing and inventory still relatively low, then you might be able to get away with buying today and not have to worry too much about downside in the future. But things can change. Florida is also cracking down on Airbnb laws. I covered this several weeks ago. And if your town all of a sudden says no more Airbnb, there's like 2000 Airbnb houses in your city, then that's 2000 houses that are immediately going to get thrown on the rental market for long-term rentals or the housing market for sale. And that can have a major impact. So no matter how much research or how much how much uh, due diligence you do on your neighborhood, there's always gonna be a curveball, and you don't really know what's gonna happen. So I think right now is just a very scary time to be a home buyer in general because of all these uncertainties. And by all means, if you are looking to buy a house, you know, get your hands on some of that money, guys. They're giving it away for free, so you might as well take your fair share if you're gonna be buying one of these houses, right? I would never fault anyone for that or look down at anyone. If they're giving the money, take it. When your property taxes continue to shoot through the roof, so does the cost of insurance and the cost of everything else related to housing, because that's what all this is gonna do in the end. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, Check out this one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.